Well, because this is a review, I have to pay homage to Fantano. Hey guys, it's Friendly Giordano here with another movie review. Uh, this one is Michael Moore's new film, Planet of the Humans. Uh, it is not good. Before we begin, because I need to get this on record, I don't need to make this video. The entire thesis for Gibbs's movie is debunked by its own aesthetic. Look at it. Look at how crap the camera quality is. It's better on my second channel, and that's deliberately crap. When watching the final cut, I'm sure Gibbs thought, well, it was filmed a decade ago. I'm sure people will understand cameras have improved since then. Now, I'm to assuming that didn't happen to renewables for some reason. Insanity. This movie is essentially a review of renewable technology from 10 years ago, which to give you an idea of just how long ago that was, do you remember the movie Riddick? That only came out seven years ago. This movie's like if CNET sat on a review of the iPhone 1 and decided to release it last week. It's just matured, hasn't it? It feels like the right time. That's the film. What's even more insane is that if CNET did that, the article went viral and the world started thinking, What? iPhone 11? No, that must be a typo. Classic iPhone 1 keyboard stuff up, yet again. It's so outdated that if Michael Moore instead released a video asking, Can Barack Hussein Obama really win a second term? That would be far more relevant. In fact, I will go even further. The arguments in this film are so outdated that Sky News are using them. And not just anyone on Sky News, Rowan Dean. The man that looks like Frankenstein killed a bunch of cherubs and sewed different parts of them together. As would be expected from a dead cherub abomination, they're not even worth debunking because you all have one question on your mind. Who in the flying is Rowan Dean. So let's go to who I'm pretty sure is traditional media's copper cab, Andrew Bolt. I am convinced his entire persona is just one big troll and he's currently thinking, oh, holy shit, dude, that went viral. Push the envelope further. Now, to do their part for the new green economy, General Motors introduced a new line of electric vehicles. When the Chevy Volt was ready for release, I attended their press conference. It's happened. The internet's desire to be smug is so insatiable they've resorted to archival footage. Pathetic. Watch me being smug about Robert means he's here. Uh, right now the car is charging off of your grid. Right. It would be charging off uh, our grid, which is 90, about 95% coal. What powers the car? Coal. <laughs> yeah, two can play at that game. What powers coal? Dinosaurs. Checkmate of Jurassic proportions. Who honestly thinks they're smart for making that point? Even more alarmingly, who's so dumb that when someone makes that point they think, mm, well, that took the wind out of clean technology. Literally. <laughs> yes, obviously whatever is in the energy mix is going to power electric cars. Therefore, the smart countries, i.e. not Australia and the US, are encouraging their population to switch to electric cars concurrently, so when they do decarbonize the electric grid, they've killed two birds with one stone, eliminating about two-thirds of emissions. What are they presenting as an alternative? Finally, we can switch over to electric vehicles without people making shit Joe Hildebrand-esque points. How long is that gonna take? 25 years. Awesome. There is no possible way that could have been better handled. You know how old that model of car is? Like everything else in this video, it's as old as the song Like a G6. It's like they released that car to celebrate that song. What state are they using? Michigan. In 2009, 3% of Michigan's energy was renewable. In a shorter time frame than it took for you to make this, wow, Kanye sunglasses, pretty futuristic, of a movie, seven years, that number had nearly tripled to 8%. And that is a state that is basically the Turkmenistan of America. Michigan is so anti-renewables, they'd rather replace their water supply with lighter fluid than have a hydro dam. It's more or less a giant gas crater that because it has Detroit in it, I'm assuming Robocop will police it soon, if he isn't already. Ozzy Zenner, a visiting scholar at UC Berkeley and Northwestern University. He's also a former General Motors employee who made it his entire life to pick up where Don Quixote left off. One of the most dangerous things right now is the illusion that alternative technologies like wind and solar are somehow different from fossil fuels. Well, I hear a lot of the times that solar cells are made out of sand. They don't use sand at all. This is one of the, the ingredients. It's actually mined quartz. You get that? 
Skinny Frodo's point is essentially that renewables aren't some magical leprechaun colony that power our homes with that one thuck from your drawer that's missing. Even if they were powered by that leprechaun colony, you can bet Ozzy would find a way to attack them because to paraphrase a song that is about as old as this documentary, Graph time, motherfucker. <laughs> These are solar and wind's lifetime emissions compared to nuclear, natural gas and coal. They may as well be a leprechaun colony. Yet throughout the entire movie you get stupid dumb lines like this. You use more fossil fuels to do this than you're getting benefit from it. You would have been better off just yeah. burning the fossil fuels in the first place. Um, I'm sorry. Do we need to bring out the graph again? Do, 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 do. But anyway, back to Sky News. See the line, Bolt. Well, no, as the plan of humans go on to say, there are times when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. Yeah! If anyone ever makes that point to you, hide your crackers, they're a parrot. The sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. Mm, yeah. See, here's the thing about that, they do. This is a mind-boggling geography fact you're probably not privy to, but Australia is bigger than the town you live in. Unless it's Dubbo, that big W's f***ing massive! Here's the graph. Queensland is negatively correlated with every other state for wind output, i.e. if it's not blowing in Queensland, it's blowing in Victoria, and Australia has 500 times the wind and solar resources we need for our current output. Second, do you think coal power plants are always providing stable power? They're not. They broke down 118 times in 2018 alone. They're so slow to respond to increased demand, comparing coal and gas to batteries is like comparing Labor's broadband to Liberal's broadband. Funny that. Finally, Andrew. Well, we ban nuclear, so you can't have that. Leaves coal and gas, kind of. And turning them up and down to all the time for when the wind and solar aren't there, well, that's terribly expensive. Where's the batteries out and oh really oh, oh, where's the systems out really do you and jimmy fallon need to go to aa meetings uh, only a small fraction of their energy actually comes from wind and solar well that's about as misleading as your friend telling you about a person they've hooked you up with for a blind day the graph you're showing represents pedijoules why are you showing pedijoules when you're talking about renewables pedijoules is all energy consumption that includes transport and fun fact that's mostly oil they choose to include coal and gas when critiquing electric cars, which is intended to displace oil consumption, but then later on lament, Oh, that's right, cars use oil. And then whine, Why isn't anyone trying to displace oil consumption? F*** me, Dad. How is this documentary taken seriously? The crux of it is, I wish the Lucky Charms mascot was real and he liked the energy grid as much as he did gold pots. Little tidbit they glossed over because they're American, so I'd be surprised if they could even locate Alaska on a map, let alone Germany, which is one of the largest manufacturing nations on Earth, and no one's saying that renewables can commercially displace activities like coal coking yet, though they're getting close. What you're trying to do though, or not trying to do because you're dumb, one or the other, is trick your audience into thinking that that figure meant electricity which are the emissions that renewables are intending to offset. These are Germany's electricity figures and ooh, would you look at that? Bit different, isn't it? There's days where renewables supply over 80% of Germany's electricity number and that shoots up year on year. So all I'm saying is, can someone tell Jeff Gibbs via his social media outlet of choice, the Telegram, you are a troglodyte, stop, and you're terrible at your job, stop. You could make a much, much longer video debunking all the stupid points in Planet of the Humans, which because I'm capable of making more than one piece of content a decade, I already did. It's coming out on Monday, 40 minutes long. Didn't even know the documentary was coming out. What are the chances? Pretty high because I never shut the f up about this shit. It explains why and how all of these dumb renewable myths are perpetuated in the media over and over again. And the reveal at the end is so scary so saucy that even me whose job it is to research this stuff didn't know this layer of festering oligarchic control existed in this country it's horrifying so that's going to be heaps of fun tune in on monday for that and like this video if you think the sun is lit ah! please share and comment below Come in.